Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Photo Critique. I'm Toby. And I'm Christina. And a reminder that we are working our way through all of those images submitted October 28th, just about a month ago. We have a special guest tonight, Liam. He's feeling... Talkative. Talkative. Hi, Liam. Yeah. So that's about all he can say, offer on critiques. Um, so we will uh, try to mute him out as best we can. Liam, if you could just be a little more constructive. <laughs> Seriously. Now. Okay. We've got a uh, few images that we want to critique, and we're going to dive right into it. Well, this is a pretty neat photo um, to me. I think that, you know, just looking at it from the technical aspect of photography, it just seems really, really interesting. So you have, you know, some enough sky detail to feel like it's dusk and, uh, um, you know, to still see clouds and even a little bit of blue in the sky. Um, you know, not like the nighttime blue. And you see detail also in the grass and the trees. And then you have this like really, really, really bright, uh, what would you call that? S not a sphere. But what, what would you call these drawings, these light drawings, this light painting? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so cool. Just really nicely done is what I was trying to get to. Um, one little tiny change. Let's go into the develop module here. One little tiny change that I would make is I would just center this. Just so now usually we don't recommend people centering things when we talk about rule of thirds, but yet in this case, uh, yeah. Well, so the the point of composition is to draw your eye to your subject and to um, basically guide the eye to your subject. And so this is done in this photo in, you know, the most obvious way, the subject, the most interesting part of the photo is right here, really obvious, really bright, you know, it just, it's there. But um, there just seems to be a lot of room in the original photo on the left side of the photo, uh, on the left side of the original photo. Um, so this doesn't look quite like it's on the right or on the left. And because this is fairly symmetrical, I think that the best composition for something like this, when you have really symmetrical backgrounds and compositional elements, the, I think that the, the, the most, the composition that makes most sense is, you know, a symmetrical composition. Um, so I think this works, to me, this works better. Um, but that's just my opinion, so. Okay. What do you think? No, I, I agree, um, because as you said, it was just slightly off center. It wasn't enough to really fall into the rule of thirds um, that, you know, to mirror that symmetricalness of the reflection, it works well to put it right in the center. Now, for those who are wondering how this is done, this is steel wool that you light on fire and whip around your head on the end of a rope or a chain. I've got a video out that shows this. Matt, this is, really nicely done. I love the reflection. I have an idea to do a similar one. Um, and I think this just works really, really nicely. We've got 25 seconds here, f5.6, just taken with the 70D and the kit lens. Uh, and um, I like it. Now, you have now cropped off Matt's uh, watermark. Yes. Let's put that back on for just a second and talk about it because it's a little, let's hit reset. Um, it's, it's certainly not one of those annoying watermarks in that it's large, you know, it's kind of down and out of the way. But I have to say that it's very sharp and bright and it, and it grabbed my eye a few times as I'm taking in this shot. Yeah. So I, I might think about Matt softening up that watermark a little bit. Yeah. Um, or maybe you just put it on there to make sure that in this critique it was said. But that is really my only critique. I, this is great. Great, let's move on to the next one. Cool, so this sort of illustrates my point 
the last point that I was trying to make. And actually, I just wondered for a second if maybe this image was photoshopped. <laughs> One side of the image was photoshopped on the other side because it is so incredibly symmetrical. Um, but it, it wasn't. Nope. Um, we have a tiny bit of difference. But it's really cool. It's, you know, you have made this sort of really boring um, tower that you could have photographed in many other really boring ways and you photographed it in a really interesting way from the bottom, completely symmetrical, still showing where it is, well, you know, how tall it is, how big it is, you know, providing context, um, but really just simplifying the scene as much as you could. So I think this is really cool. That's, I don't have any any improvements. I, I agree. Um, I think this is one of those shots, in a lot of cases, seems like an easy shot. Just, you know, walk under something symmetrical. But, it, um, but I, it's I've not. done shots like this before, and I don't feel like they've ever come out as good. Uh, and I don't know, maybe this tower has a little bit of extra going on. I see these tri in, inside angles. But we've just got such nice repeating patterns of both squares and triangles or well, actually not a triangle, some other type of shape in there that works really nicely. You chose F9 for your aperture or, or the camera chose, and that is perfect because we get everything, pretty much everything in sharp focus from foreground to infinity, especially shooting it as wide as 18 millimeters. Uh, and that's perfect for this because that's what we want. We want this repeating sharpness to infinity and beyond. Really nice job. I think, um, let's switch to the library real quick and see this is Fabio. Uh, Silva. Silva, taken somewhere in Portugal. So, very cool. Very nice. You know, I will say, I will say this: it feels a little grayish to me in places, uh, and I might up the contrast just a little bit. Now uh, it gets a little muddy over here. Um, you know, that that's really uh, maybe a little vibrance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, too much. But that was really my only critique. Very nice. I see, let's see who's it. Is it Mossy by Toby Simpic. Well, wonderful name. <laughs> um, so, Toby, I see what you were trying to do with this picture. You were trying to sort of create um, leading lines of some sort. Uh, well, I see some leading, I see some patterns that sort of lead us from the back to the leaf and it's not this leaf and its water droplets being our what we are expected right. to focus on yeah uh it doesn't have a ton of impact for me I, I do think that the moss is really cool and the colors are super nice um but at the same time that leaf on the right this is cut off and distracting and I don't love, um, we don't get enough of this background to really see what's going on. So it's just kind of, I don't know, it, it, it feels distracting to me as opposed to sort of aiding, guiding my eye back to here. Um, and uh, the last thing that I wanted to say was, oh yeah, so you... I don't think, I don't know that it works so well to have your uh, leading lines come from the background of the photo to the foreground. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, I start here and then it leads me away to here. Um, so that's all I got. Okay. Um, I think first off, I think the exposure here is wonderful. The colors are lovely. This leaf with those drops of water on it right there uh, just really fantastic in great detail. This is a Canon point and shoot, the XX, SX50. Yes. Um, it's done, you know, a really nice job. And I don't know if you did how much manual control you did um, over this, but uh, as I said, exposure is wonderful. I really agree with Christina on this point here. This leaf being cut off that needs to get out of the frame. And again, yeah, I same thing. You know, our this very first leaf is our subject and then we have this trail off into it just it draws our eye up away from our subject and we want something to draw our eye to it now you could try shooting from here 
and still keeping, so shooting from this side towards this leaf, that might be a possibility. Another is to simplify here and just capture this leaf almost straight down, right onto it, I think, and catch those little droplets. Um, or in a certain, another angle where again, it's just this leaf on this carpet of green. Those would be suggestions, but I, I love, I love, I love this right here. I think this can be its own picture quite nicely. Thank you, Toby. We have a lovely caption here. So much information. So this is from Daniel. Uh, and this is Lisbon, Portugal. This is a panorama made out of 14 shots using the Canon 70D and the kit lens at 35 millimeters, f8, 120 second exposure. So two second, or sorry, two minutes each using trigger trap. Love trigger trap. ISO 100. Original image is 12,000 by 6,000 pixels. A, oh, you made a 63 inch by 30 inch print to hang on your wall. Awesome. I Very love cool. folks making prints. You'd like to show a little less of the bank, but then you would even have to leave out part of the bridge or stand in the middle of the river. Right. It's tricky. And it looks like it's slanted down here. So you, even if you went down here, it looks like you'd be slippery and down into the rocks. Uh, um, really nice. Uh, I think this probably looks beautiful up on your wall in this big, long print. We have this really... Did you print it on metallic? Because I think that's where this would really stand out as we have this really nice long exposure, soft water uh, that just works really well. I do totally hear you. Christine and I have talked about this before. Triangles catch the eye. And we've got this triangle right here, especially the very little corner of it that's bright. Um, and what, what, any suggestions? Anything you can do about that? I'm trying to think about this because I hear what you're saying. It would be tough to crop this out and get the same type of picture that you did. Um, one of my first uh, suggestions would be to use a longer lens if you have access to it. Um, I think mm -hmm. if you were to move further back, I don't know how far back you can move, but if you were able to move further back, you could potentially zoom in more and compress the area around you so that you crop the bank out. Um, so it would take a little bit of playing around with your uh, composition and focal length and seeing whether or not that works. Um, but um, my other suggestion would be to get closer to the bridge itself and then shoot at more of an angle. Um, so then you are, you know, the first big, uh, the first, what would you call this? Pylon. This, this first pylon, um, would be large and then this one would be smaller. Um, so it wouldn't, you wouldn't get quite the same effect, it but it would still be an interesting picture and you mm -hmm. could conceivably still get enough of a, ref of an interesting reflection. Um, I, um, I, one thing that I would have done with this photo is I would have, it drives me crazy that you don't work in solo mode. I don't. You're talking to me right now. Yes. <laughs> Not Daniel. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would do a little bit more distortion, uh, I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? No, I'm not going the wrong way. Um, so this may be an image to get into Photoshop. Um, to, you know, drag this horizon down a little bit because the horizon isn't. What tool would you use in Photoshop to do that? I would use the warp tool. Um, yeah, it would be, I think, pretty quick. Uh, and you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't get this stuff around the corners necessarily. Um, so let's reset that back to zero. Um, yeah, so I would, I would straighten the horizon and then I would tilt it to the left slightly. It feels like it's kind of fallen down this way a little bit. That's what it yeah, feels like. It's disguised like. a little because of the we've got the curve here as a result of the panorama. But yeah. yes, it does feel a little tilted. Um, but I love this reflection. I love that it that it doesn't just stop. That it, it like you can see the end of the reflection, and there's it's just a really interesting it's a, nice, a mirror of the bridge shape. Re repeating pattern. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Great. Great. Thank you.
Let's see whose foot it is. It's Ian yeah. Packer. So in the last couple of critiques, we've talked about uh, really exploring a scene and then simplifying it to make a great photo. Mm -hmm. And I think this does an exceptional job of that. Um, I mean, you know, there's not a ton in the photo, but you can still, you have a sense of scale. You know what time of the day it is. Um, you have an idea of how the water is moving and you have a mood of, you know, how this person is feeling at this moment. And it's just really, really, really lovely. Um, yeah, I would be extremely happy if I had taken this photo. I don't nice. have any critici criti critique. Um, we happen to be flying through, a, you know, a series of images that we have lots of wonderful things to say about. Yeah. It's always nice. I'd say there's a couple things. One, there's this little bit something here. Is that a seagull or Looks something? Like a, a splash. A splash, a fish. There's fish getting in our I don't have a problem with that. Um, well, it's just because everything is so perfect. And then there's this, and it's close to her. So that... But it doesn't have to be all perfect. Well, it grabs my eye. Um, so, you know, I would try cloning that out a little bit. And there's also something, it could be completely an optical illusion, but it feels a little crooked to me. I think it's these lines coming in the water here. Um, and I would, you know, maybe I'm just channeling Christina, even though she's right here to channel herself. I just, just a little bit. Just no. Like that. No. Now no. they're crooked. Okay. Never mind. That you have to do it again. Oh. Well, let me just hit reset. Okay. Uh, I like the, what I do like is the crop. This is not your standard. What, what is this? Is this a 16.9 sure. or 1610? Let's see. No, it's much longer. The 21 by nine, even, or maybe it's a 21 by nine. Yes. Nice Which you, you have discussed before Christina being you really like, and that's, it works really well for this image. Um, yeah. And I'll agree with all the, things you said. Yeah, this is awesome. Nice. Thank you. And here we have a photo of a cat. Matthew, you're a man after my own heart. <laughs> um, not only is this cat adorable, but he's also in a warm, cozy blanket. Just wins all of the points. Okay, um, now let's critique it though. All right. <laughs> So, one of the first things that strikes out to me about this photo is the stuff in the background. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there is a place for stuff in the background, and you know, like the household decorations and things in backgrounds of photos. But uh, your job as a photographer is to neatly organize it behind your subject or around your subject. Um, you know, we got a lot of intersections. So we that it doesn't intersect and so that it, it doesn't distract. Something coming in on the right. Sorry. You're talking over me. It's very rude. Please continue. You can cut all that out. Mm -mm. So it's the photographer's job to arrange everything in a, in a way that does not distract from looking at our subject. Um. So that is my first criticism and my main criticism about this photo. Um, another thing that I notice here in this photo is that because the subject is very close to a window or it's a particularly bright day, there is a very, a pretty high contrast between the lights and the darks. Um, so what you have here is Overexposed highlights. Um, these are, I believe, are recoverable, but they're a little overexposed. Um, and then shadows that you can't bring back or, or clipped shadows. Um, so one of the things that I would do, that I try to do sometimes when I'm taking photos is, and you know, you may not have been able to do this with this cat because, you know, cats don't really have a ton of patience for being photographed. I know that firsthand. Um, 
is move your subject further away from the light. You still get um, a nice soft light, but it's not super uh, harsh and it's not, I mean, this isn't harsh, but the contrast isn't as high. There's, a, there's more dynamic range in the photo just by moving farther away from the light, if that makes sense. Um, one last thing, I would just warm it up a little bit. The whites look a little bit blue. Um, I think it needs to be warmed up a little bit. Yep. So uh, I agree with those things. Uh, this is background here. And my, so first thing when I noticed the background being uh, enough in focus that I could see these are some little toy cars and a little frame and stuff, um, is check what aperture you're shot at. You shot at f4. That's the widest aperture you had available to you with this lens. So then look at your focal length, 24. That's typically, for many years, whatever the camera, I'd get to my subject and whatever focal length the camera was set at um, would be fine. And oftentimes that would be its widest because I just picked it up off the shelf and the, the lens is always kind of slid in. But if you back up, take a moment to back up and zoom in, will really give you a better depth of field and really help the, your viewer focus on your subject. Yes, I think that that would be a great way to cut down on background distractions. I think uh, more challenging and possibly a better way to learn um, way that you could uh, just try to approach this photo differently is just move, move yourself up a little bit um, maybe pull back and then try to still compose those things within the photo but maybe just maybe you're telling a story about the entire room maybe you're telling a story about this moment at this time and that means that you include those cars in the back and that frame at the top but they have to be it has to all be very intentional and it has to look intentional um, so you could even, you know, stop down a little bit and shoot at like f6 or f8 and include a lot of the background, but just organize it neatly um, and tell a really interesting story. Okay. I will say that, uh, you know, our rule of if there's eyes in this frame, they should be in sharp focus and yep. very nicely done that here. Well, thank you, Matthew. And our last picture. Hey. Hey, we know this place. This looks familiar. Coliseum at night from Barack Sicker. Cool. Well, this is a really interesting perspective. I think I recognize this. I believe this is the street where they had the foosball tables mm -hmm. and ping pong and all that stuff set up after we left the Coliseum. And I vaguely remember this as a view. Here's the first thing. I don't know if you wanted to say more, cut you off a little bit. That's all right. Okay. Um, the, the first thing that I like about this, for those who don't know, that is the Colosseum in Rome, um, is that this is a different perspective than you typically see of that building or the remains of that building. That right there gives it points. Always, if you can capture something in a light that isn't, not necessarily light, in a direction, a framing, composition that isn't typical, I think that helps your image stand out. Agreed. One of the things that really surprises me about this photo is it's pretty ballsy. I mean, you're standing in the middle of the street and there are cars going by you. Granted, it's pretty late, but still, I see some light streaks going by you. That's really cool. Um, well, not only were you standing there, but you must have been standing there with a tripod for at least five seconds. Right. Yep. And probably took you a couple takes to get this photo, yep. I would think. Mm -hmm. um, Another thing that's that that I really like about this photo is, yes, the, this perspective not only gets you points for being unique, but it also really depicts Rome in the most, I don't know, to me, I would say accurate way or not accurate, but it depicts it in the way that I, I feel I experienced it. Mm -hmm. Here you have this city that is bustling, busy people are going about their days, they have all these, you know, new roads, and, uh, well, when I say new, I mean newer, <laughs> um, and, you know, these places, 
that you know have existed for not very long and then all of a sudden right there there is the Colosseum you know really old structure just kind of in the middle of everything um, so I, I love this picture for that yeah it's this blend of modern and ancient which which Rome is and this picture captures captures that nicely with the light trails of cars going by and the street lights and the modern road um, which actually probably isn't actually an ancient road but it's got lines on painted on it stuff and then of course the Colosseum yes good I I love the underside of these trees it's almost painterly like up here and the detail the, the, the way the lights have lit them is wonderful a little a little bothered by this um, coming in here on the left just a little bit if we could just Get that out of there and have uh, just crop that in just a little bit right there. Maybe I can try to do that right now. There. I like it. It's a nice shot. Yeah, I would love to see it in black and white. Oh, yeah? Well, I didn't mean that you had to do it. <laughs> I just meant... You know, it obviously yep. needs a little bit more work, but... Yep. I think it works nicely as a black and white as well, because and I think the reason why you suggested that is we've got a lot of different colors going on, the very orange of the lights, and mm -hmm. the cleaner lights down here, and the blue lights. And I have to say that the red, this red of this car breaking right here, definitely draws my eye. I'd like to see a shot where that car isn't there, or at least its lights aren't on. Um, you know, it's sitting there at that traffic, at that light for that five seconds that you were taking that exposure. But otherwise, really nice shot. Yep. Great. Wonderful place to end. Thank you all so much for those who uh, submitted and allowed us to critique your work this evening. We still have a pile to work through, but we are about halfway through. And we should have another one out to you next week as well. Thanks so much for watching. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.